you want bigger arms and you want to know what's the best training approach for bigger biceps and triceps. Should you train arms on their own day? Lots of pro bodybuilders have an arm day. Should you follow an upper lower or push pull leg split? Lots of experts on the internet claim you need to do just compound lifts. This is a very common question amongst lifters. And honestly, a very common debate by coaches and those focused on helping others build more muscle. And if you keep searching, you're going to find a hundred different arguments for having an arm day or not. But I'm going to eliminate that confusion for you here. I'm not going to tell you that you should or shouldn't have an arm day. But what I am going to do is I'm going to tell you all the questions that you need to ask yourself that will determine if you actually should include an arm day in your training. And if you're not someone who should include an arm day in your plan, why adding one might actually be counterproductive to the rest of your training. So let's start with question number one. Have you gained a considerable amount of muscle mass to the entire body? Most guys entering the gym, they need more muscle growth everywhere. They want bigger arms, but with that also comes a need for bigger pecs, delts, back, quads, hamstrings, calves, etc. If you're at this stage of training, or you have not yet built the first 10, 20, or even 30 pounds of muscle mass to your frame, your body is primed to add muscle. In fact, this is the easiest stage to build more muscle mass. And now to dedicate a full day of training just to arms, that will likely be taking away of productive time to add more muscle mass to the entire body. And that includes arms. At this stage, by training with more compound focused splits, your full body training, your upper and lower splits, programs like my old school push pull legs, or even hybrid strength and mass gain systems like my five day mass gain program. Every session you train in the gym is dedicated to adding as much muscle mass to the entire body as possible. On push pull leg systems, you're obviously training the chest, shoulders, and triceps in one session, and the back, traps, and rear delts in another. With these workouts, you're getting plenty of arm work, especially for guys who need mass everywhere. But here is the important thing that you need to realize for guys who need to add more muscle mass in general. Every one of those gym sessions are spent building as much muscle as possible to the entire body. Even with a program like my five day mass gain, you have an arm day, but you also are training shoulders on that day, hitting compound lifts as well. And at a time where your main priority of training is pure size, having a day of training where you're just doing arms, that might actually be robbing you a valuable day in the gym where you could be building more muscle mass in the big picture. But of course, I'm not dogmatic about this approach at all. There's always nuance in bodybuilding, and there are plenty of reasons why you might still benefit from an arm day. So just keep this in mind, and let's explore more questions that you should ask yourself. Question number two, do your upper body sessions last more than 60 to 90 minutes? If you're following an upper lower split, or if you're following push pull legs, or even this applies to a full body system, any of these programs, arms will generally be trained last or at least at the tail end of this training session. And if that means that at your current strength levels and the amount of volume you're training, if that's causing you to take 90 minutes or more to get through the session, you might not actually even be getting to the arm training portion of your workout until already after training for 60 plus minutes. In this case, starting another body part, if you've already been training hard for an hour or more, that's a poor way to train a muscle group especially one that's lagging. Every hard set you perform in the gym creates some level of CNS fatigue. An hour into a session, you're carrying a lot more fatigue than before you started. And even if you're training a different body part, your performance is gonna be negatively impacted from everything you've previously done that day. And as a result, the quality of work done to that muscle group will suffer. So if your workouts are already very long, you most likely can benefit from taking that 90 plus minute workout and capping it at let's say 60 minutes and then moving the remainder of that workout, in this case the arms, to another session and train it while fresh. But now, if you're hitting your push pull legs and your arms are not necessarily your main focus and you're also getting in and out of the gym in an hour or so, and you're progressing consistently, it wouldn't necessarily be to your advantage to have an arm day. But of course, the argument is worth repeating again. There is in fact nuance to this. And that brings us to our next question. Are your arms a lagging muscle group? While many people might be blindly thinking, I have small arms, so yes, they are lagging. The fact is that most guys under 200 pounds just won't be walking around with arms above 18 inches pumped. And even that, it's pretty massive for guys around average height. If you're a smaller guy, and you think you're gonna will your way up from 16 inch arms all the way up to 19 inches just by having an arm day, you're probably gonna be disappointed with your results. The fastest way to build bigger arms in this case is to focus on diet and hard training. Get that body weight up from 180 pounds or wherever you're at up to 200 plus pounds. Watch how much quicker that added weight gain and general muscle mass growth will result in bigger arms as well. But let's say you do have small arms. Again, in proportion to the rest of your body. You're someone who's developed a massive chest, wide lats, round delts, a thick upper back, and tree trunk legs, but you're just not walking around with impressive arms. That is the definition of a weak body part. And the best way to bring up a weak point is to train that muscle group, either first in the session or 
on its own day. The simplest way to do this is implementing an arm day. A bro split or a typical one muscle group per week split is an obvious example, but one that I personally feel is not necessarily ideal for most of the lifting population. Another great option is taking whatever training split you're currently running and simply adding an arm day. Great examples could be taking a four day upper and lower split and adding a fifth day to it where you train just arms. You'd cut back on the arm work that's in your upper body session and move it to a separate day. You could also take a push pull leg split and add in a fourth day to the rotation, making it a push pull arms leg split. But some not so obvious ways of doing this is training the arms first in a session with another body part. Some ways I really like to do this is to take a less taxing upper body session let's say shoulders, and train shoulders and arms in one session. And for those that need more attention to the arms, you should train the arms first and then move on to the delts. Of course, if delts are a priority, you would do them first. Another underrated method is one that I really like with the torso and limb split. If you take a guy running a typical upper lower split and you simply cut the upper body session down in length, remove the arm work, and now move it to the start of leg day, and you start that leg day by finishing off the upper body session of arm work, then finally moving on to the leg work. The direct arm work here is nowhere near as taxing as the leg work. So the few sets of arms that you do before are minimally fatiguing to the leg training that you're about to do after. And if you're one of those guys who are in the advanced stages and you have to pull out all the big tools, simply having an arm day where you train nothing but arms will be your best bet to growing that stubborn body part. But understand that by doing this, you're also trading off another day in the gym that could be spent building muscle to the entire body. You're also tapping into your recovery ability with another day of training added to your weekly calendar. And you're likely gonna progress the rest of your muscular development slower. But if you're already walking around with a solid amount of muscle mass, understand that this is in fact a necessary trade-off to get that leg and muscle group to grow. And if you already have that much muscle everywhere else, this probably isn't a bad thing. So the real answer, if you should add an arm day is it depends arm day absolutely has its place and an arm day will 100 percent be beneficial to developing lagging arms if you have lagging arms but if you're just someone who needs more general mass using them incorrectly might actually be inhibiting your overall progress so make sure to ask yourself these questions and use arm days appropriately as you'll see with most of my training programs if you run any of them most people will generally fall somewhere in the middle of these two extremes and most of my training methods are designed for maximal arm development while not sacrificing the growth of the entire body in the process. And if you're not following them currently, and you do want to check them out, all the links to my programs are down below. And as always, if you want to see more of the best original body link content just like this, make sure to hit subscribe.